Many technologies have become mandatory practices for India's Defense Research Development Organizations, DRDO. One such is artificial intelligence. In his fireside chat on India's DRDO, working on advanced and futuristic technologies between G. Satish Reddy, Chairman DRDO and Secretary Department of Defense Research, Ministry of Defense and T. Radhakrishna, Editor, South ET Government. Over to you, gentlemen. Hi, on behalf of ET Government, the Economic Times, I welcome Dr. Satish Reddy, Secretary, Department of Defense Research, Chairman, DRDO, and Director General of Aeronautical Development Agency under Ministry of Defense and Government of India. Sir, welcome to the ET Government again. Thank you. Thank you. So my first question to you. DRDO is India's largest and most diverse research organization mandated with the military's research and development. With the advent of emerging technologies and ever-changing or upgrading modern defense strategies, adding cyber and space as a fourth and fifth strategic areas, what kind of capabilities and readiness practices DRDO is exploring to become the future ready organization, if you can explain. Uh, firstly, the last few decades, TRDO has uh, worked on many technologies and in major areas of defense, the level of maturity has been uptight. These technologies are the missiles technologies, radars, the electronic warfare systems, the torpedoes, sonars, guns, the attack systems, Fighter aircrafts, the tanks, communication systems, and related things. So, having got maturity in many of these technologies, now the focus is on, as you said, in the advanced technologies. As you said, the cyber and space have come fourth and fifth dimensions of offense. Artificial intelligence is playing in a major. So, I have created cyber uh, and uh, divisions in the radio are working on cyber-related research and development to protect our systems from cyber attack. A lot of measures have been taken for auditing or to ensure the cyber safety precautions what need to be taken. The SOPs have been laid and continuous research by very young team is going on in that Similarly, the artificial intelligence is another very important area which the world is looking at. So, every system which is going to come in the future will have artificial intelligence built into it. So, all the system laboratories in DRU have been very clearly instructed to have a AI group within the laboratory, which actually ensures that AI goes into each and every. The laboratory which is there in Bangalore called Center for Artificial Intelligence Robotics and also the Young Scientist Laboratory which is also working on uh, artificial intelligence are concentrating on various AI features and developing the various technologies around that and then providing to the various laboratories. So a lot of new areas we are concentrating like the Young Scientist Laboratory in Mumbai, in IIT Mumbai, is concentrating on quantum technologies. You must be knowing that DRDO has already established the first Indian quantum communication between two laboratories of 12 kilometers. The quantum random number generator has already been realized by DRDO, the Young Scientist Laboratory. And we are working on many other communication technologies like SDRs. They have already been developed, working on Arahead's technologies working on advanced materials. This is again a young scientist laboratory which has been created, which is working in Hyderabad, working on smart and advanced materials, working on cognitive technologies, working on uh, uh, various other technologies like high power electromagnetics, uh, high power lasers, and related technologies, surveillance technologies, and all that. 
So the concentration has been, probably you must be knowing that there was a committee set up under the chairmanship of uh, the director IIT, Professor Rambo Rao, to draw the charters of the laboratory to be in contemporary with the today's technologies. So these charters are also of the laboratories have been awarded. So now the charters are aligned with the advanced technologies. And so DRDO is focusing more and more on advanced and futuristic technologies. Sir, in the 21st century information age, there is a need for a collaborative approach like government, industry, academia working together. How significant is the collaborative or integrated approach in the case of DRDO? And how many technologies you have transferred to the industry so far? And some of your experiences working with the academia and industry, if you can share. The importance of having a excellent ecosystem in the country is very important for the growth in defense technology. The ecosystem primarily means academia working in the direction, they're working on the basic research and basic technologies which are required for the defense. Then the industry having the necessary infrastructure to produce these technologies and also carry out research initially. So a lot of work has gone in uh, to work with academia very closely and also to develop the industries in a big. Firstly, talking about academia, we have been working with uh, academia in a big way, various universities and various institutes. Centers of excellence have been there. Not now, decades, decades back, whether you talk about the Institute of Science or IIT Chennai or IIT Mumbai, working with Jalapur University or Kolkata Engineering College or various things. So today, we have nine centers of excellence in various academic institutes. It's ISC, it's IIT Chennai, it's IIT Mumbai, then we have uh, in Jammu University, we have in Mizoram University, we have in Hyderabad Central University, we have in Bhartiyar uh, University. And we also have in Jalapur University, these are all the places where we have centers of excellence and IIT Delhi focusing on specific technologies. Not only that, we have extramural research funding, which actually DRDO headquarters provides to various academic institutes on the futuristic technology. There are four research boards work actually to develop the technologies to inculcate the research in those particular areas. Aeronautics, naval sciences, life sciences, and materials related research. These research boards also are headed by various professors and eminent personalities in the country. They also identify the subjects and actually give the projects to the And then we also have various labs uh, which actually give local projects to various academic. Today, we are working with about more than 300 academic institutes in the country with a budget overlay of about 1,000 crores, 1,000 crores budget spending in the academic. Similarly, today, a lot of industry, when you actually started Dr. Kalam, the IGMDP program, there must be some single digit or a few industries there working with us, particularly working with the blueprint, meaning you give the design and drawing, we make as per the drawing. Today, we have more than 2,000 industries working as Tier 1 and Tier 2 industries, meaning who can supply systems and subsystems. Many of them have graduated from build to build to build to specification. In I give the specification, they will be able to build. Their total industry is about 10,000 industries, including uh, some component suppliers and various suppliers. So the number has increased deeply. And DRDO, whatever technologies have been developing it, they will never produce anything on its own. Only make a prototype or few numbers for the trials required. Under the, after that, the technology is transferred to the industry. Industry produces them in a big way. There are more than 1,000 technology transfers which have happened to the industry. More than 1,000 technologies. In fact, let me tell you, last year during the COVID, technologies which have been developed by DRDO for the COVID, which are about... Uh, 70, 75 technology. They've been transferred to about 115 industries. So this is the way where we are working very closely with the industries, trying to build the industry base in the country, promoting the industry, and a lot of other measures we have also brought in 
to support the industry, to make the industry come up in a big way. And many measures are there which I'll uh, separately tell you. How about uh, working with the like-minded international partners uh, and countries to, to explore the uh, knowledge exchange or working together in some case-to-case -case based projects? We do work with various uh, countries in the world on two fronts. As you said, working on some of the futuristic technologies as a research, good research. And in some countries working jointly to develop certain particular systems and equipment and weapons. Talking about the second part first, as you know, India and Russia have jointly developed technologically a most missile, atomic cruise missile. It's a joint venture. Similarly, the Marsam missile, the medium range surface has been jointly developed between Israel and India. So there are models like this where we are working with various countries to jointly develop a system or a weapon. Also with various countries in the uh, world, that is Russia or America, or France, or UK, or Australia, we are working with them uh, on futuristic technologies as a research company. In many countries, we have these associations and working with them on futuristic research. You are always rising to an occasion. You have pioneered in diversifying DRDO talent to effectively develop required technologies during the COVID to fight against the pandemic. I mean, first time I noticed uh, uh, DRDO developing, uh, I mean, you've been developing technologies, but for the interest of the human and their cyber survival, I'm sure you must be developing similar technologies for defense personnel as well, those who are living and staying in the different conditions for their survival. What is the outcome of these efforts? Status on such technologies for next steps to commercialize and global exports, if you can. Uh, primarily, uh, the role of DRDO is to develop um, equipment for our armed forces weapons or systems or things. But when you are developing it, there's so many technologies have actually applications in the civilian use. So, uh, if you look at the worldwide, not just DRD also, any technologies which have initially have been developed for the defense forces have become very important in the life of uh, SMS and you know, the GPS. become actually developed for uh, military applications has become life part and parcel of uh, everyone's life, clearly the internet. So similarly, a lot of technologies which have been developed, which are developed, they have spin-off applications. And so the laboratories are also working on those spin-off technologies, which can be actually brought into a civilian life. Example, a very prominent example is biodigester. Biodigester has been developed for specific applications in very cold areas like Shiyashan. But it is finding applications in the civil in use where most of the railways are using those biodigesters, biotilates. Similarly, um, lightweight materials which have been developed are actually are getting very, very useful as instruments which are brought in to support the handicapped people. So likewise, many technologies. So the technologies where we were working for CBRM technology, nuclear biological radiation, uh, uh, nuclear related technologies, so that has resulted in coming out as masks, PPEs, and many things, literally sanitizers. So that is how when uh, the COVID last year uh, came up in a bit, and uh, the, the day lockdown has been imposed, that is the day actually we came out with the sanitizers. Laboratories have worked in a big way, came out with many, many technologies, ultraviolet sanitizers, or microwave related sanitizers, or luggage um, sanitizing equipment, so on and so far. So actually, uh, the sanitizing a big, big hall and things like that. From there onwards, uh, so many technologies which are actually useful to in the hospital, in the ventilator. Scientists have worked for uh, three months, day and night, 
and a ICU ventilator has come out in this country, which have been produced in large numbers, in a very short span of time. The country doesn't have any uh, scarcity for ventilators. So these are all the technologies which have actually emerged from the basic technologies of uh, DRDO uh, for defense as spin-off technology. Sir, which are the technologies, in your view, most will impact or influence the defense sector and its ecosystem in the days, in your day-to-day -day research and development functions? Some examples, underwater technologies, UAV and uh, artificial intelligence, swarm technologies, if you can elaborate on that. Oh, you are very right. Uh the technological landscape is changing very fast. Cyber-related technologies, artificial intelligence, the swarms, and uh, underwater uh, results, underwater autonomous results, and uh, underwater farm technologies, and quantum communication-related technologies, and many other things started playing a major role in the defense trade. Particularly, symmetric warfare uh, is an important element as the warfare also has changed in a big way. On that, in the border, you have a, a continuous war between two nations. There are many other uh, ways that we are facing the threat today. For that, lots of uh, technologies have come into which are working on, like anti-drone technology. Very important technology what it needs. So that's how DRDO has come up in the technologies of anti-drone technologies as both soft kill and hard kill technologies in a very compact form, which is information. Similarly, uh, farm technologies in drones are either for surveillance applications or offensive applications is one of the very important things. Farms underwater whether for mine sweeping, or mine or killing, or various applications, it is one of the very important things which will be coming up in a uh, whole in a big way. Similarly, the security communication in the given environment today is very important. That is where the quantum technologies are playing a major And that's another technology. Then the high power electromagnetics, terahertz. Terahertz, lots of actually applications where in, for security purposes. Stand of scanning of a person this is very important. Foliage penetration. If uh, some people are hiding foliage and you should need to have a foliage penetration data, uh, through all that, these are all uh, many things that are actually the current is technology. Actually, DRDO is putting in a lot of efforts to come out with many technologies. We, we have developed many technologies in this area also. Sir, uh, one project which is close to your heart and you led it, Mission Shakti. Uh, just can you uh, give us a status on that and explain? Uh, basically, Mission Shakti, it's uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji is the one who directed us that we should show to the world the technological capability of the country. So that is how actually the project is taken. Honorable Prime Minister has actually given directions to uh, execute this project less than two years and also uh, various repercussions what it will have asked to keep it secret. Security advisor Sri Ajit Dhawal has monitored the complete development. A team of about 100 scientists to 150 scientists have worked day and night for two years developing a missile, completely new missile and for a specific application, right from design stage on the drawing board, realizing it and actually testing it. Two years is never done in the world. But our scientists, our boys have done two years working day and night. They have done it on 27th March 2019, very successfully. It has gone and directly hit with just six centimeters accuracy of a satellite which is orbiting Earth orbit at about 300 kilometers altitude and then ensure that the debris are also very minimal. So 
So this demonstration, what has been done, as Honorable Prime Minister has said, this is only a the showing the technological capability of the country. Country that can take up mega missions, mega complex technological missions, and demonstrate it. And that is what the country has done. And the nation doesn't have the ambition to do the organization of the space. So this demonstration has been done, and the entire world has seen the capability of the. Thank you, sir, and congratulations, Billy Ted. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Atma Nirbhar Bharat Yojana is influencing the central government and its ministries, also encouraging innovations across the sectors. How significant is it for DRDO and its practices? It's a very, very important move by the government, saying that we need to have Atma Nirbhar. Any country first needs to have Atma Nirbhar in the defense technology. No country outside give you state-of-the-art or latest or advanced technologies based on system. Very clear. You need to develop your own weapons and, and systems for the defense are So that move, particular move, has given a lot of boost. And so many technologies are being developed within the and armed forces are fully aligned with the indigenous tech. Industry being actually supported and promoted in a big way in this direction. Particularly the startups are encouraged in a big way. A lot of funding mechanisms have, a lot of funding mechanisms. Uh, particularly if you look at ERU, the technology development funding, various industries, up to 10 crore rupees for developing a particular system uh, is being encouraged in a big way. A lot of industries are coming out and trying to indigenize the product which is being imported today or trying to develop a, a totally new project. And a lot of measures have been also taken. Like DRDV has come out with a policy called Development Come Production Partner. An industry, a private industry, along with, of course, private public sector, it used to be their only public sector. The private industries are also taken as partners even in missile technologies Right at the beginning of the project, industry is taken as a partner and he works along with you. And the first prototype of it comes out maybe from the industry. And so industry learns everything and they will be having, getting the knowledge also and working with you. And the first prototype comes and the trial times also comes down. Those are also integrated in a complete integrated manner. Government has come out with many measures to support this and stop the import. You know, 200 crores, you cannot import now. Unless otherwise there are very, very special permissions. Everything has to be made in the country. These are the measures which have been brought in. And so, I'm sure in the coming about five years plus, the indigenous content in the total weapons will be a very high percentage. Sir, as a head of uh, DRDO, Atman, under Atman Nirbhar Bharat, how much percentage do you see to reduce the imports? And how much percentage do you see increasing the exports from India, especially in defense products? Good question. The motto of the government is reduce the imports in a big way and export the defense products to the world in a big way. This is the motto. I'm very confident the way the technological development is going on in the country, the way industry is coming up in the country. Okay? The indigenous content in the armed forces may go beyond 80%, three years and five years plus. And at the same time, the exports are picking up in a big way. Government is supporting the exports in a uh, decisions in major uh, policy directions. Look at the recent Akash related uh, clearances which have been given for the export of Akash missiles for more than 10 countries. And a lot of simplification in the export policies have been uh, coming in. Without this, it will become one of the major exporters in the defense equipment in the, again 
five years plus time frame. Which are ongoing priority areas for you for 2021? Maybe you can call it as a project and supplement question. Some of the technologies developed by the defense inducted in Indian Air Force, Indian Navy, and Army, maybe uh, cyber and uh, space also. If you can give me one or two examples of each. Some of the recent uh, uh, systems which are inducted with the armed forces are the air to air missile Astra, the Air Force, then the smart anti air field. Uh, Another one is inducted into Air Force. Navy, we have the Varunastra torpedo, which has been inducted, uh, and also Ramos missile into the Navy and Air Army and Air Force. Another uh, important one. The Akash missile, which is inducted into again Army and Air Force, along with the Naka rocket, and uh, then some of the JVPC small. Uh, weapons, munitions, these are the ones which are actually inducted into the arm as a major ones, leaving aside the Arjun Mark 1A, which Honorable Prime Minister has handed over to of Army staff uh, in Chennai recently, and the 83 members of LCA Mark 1A order, which has uh, been given by Indian Air Force and Kingstown Aeronautical Limited, developed by Aeronautical Development Agency, is the major products what you can uh, talk about today. Can you uh, say the major projects which are ongoing on right now, which are in very advanced stage because you asked for one year. One is the world's highest range 150 km gun attacks is in its advanced trials and which I'm sure that they able to get better into the army. Similarly, the quick reaction surface to air missile, another one, also again in the advanced stages, we should be uh, going into the uh, armed forces very soon after some more uh, trials. What we are doing. Priority areas the advanced and medium combat aircraft, fifth generation aircraft, a major product which will be coming up from this country is another important uh, one. Actually, as in our priority, similarly, developing a lot of small arms, number of missiles, lots of radars, uh, medium power radar or long range radars, and other areas. Once on the torpedoes, what we are developing, SDR, software different radios for various applications. And you also must be knowing that DRDO has developed the air independent propulsion for the submarine, which actually. Very, very few nations in the world have developed. The ADO could develop it. India has developed it. And getting it to be this product, getting it to submarines, another important uh, area. So these are all some of the areas which are actually on high level priority. Group. Sir, uh, to conclude, before concluding, as per the industry is concerned, defense and its ecosystem is concerned. How do you see the roadmap for next five to ten years? Industry, firstly, as I said, is coming up in a big way. The number of industries coming into defense have gone up. There are more than about two thousand industries. Many of them have transformed from build to brick to build stations, and some of the industries are able to research some amount of research in the niche areas. A lot of startups, youngsters who are earlier looking into only ICT, that is the information communication technology. Yeah. A lot of them are jumping into defense technology. A lot of startups are coming. So the industry is going to come up in a big way in the country, setting up large and critical infrastructure with the capability to produce, mass produce a lot of defense technologies and systems and equipment and all that. Supply to our armed forces and supply to the world also. In fact, a lot of uh, companies from outside they have actually tied up in Indian industries here to produce many of these things and supply it to them. And as I said, the development and um, technology partner uh, role industry is going to play with DRD. 
will also enhance the technological capabilities of the industry. So in the next about five years or so, I'm thinking most of the current technologies what are there today, industry will be able to uh, get a hold on it and industry will be able to develop products on its own. That's how DRDV has come out with 108 items which industry only will be doing. Industry, DRDV will not be developing. Industry will be developing. So industry will be able to develop most of the current technologies. DRDO will be concentrating on the futuristic technologies, giving the necessary handhold and support to the industry in various forms. And also, in uh, definite niche areas, industry will be able to do its own R&D also and come out with products actually world name. I see Indian industry is going to come up in a big way in the next five years and is going to play uh, an important role in the world's defense landscape. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, finally, uh, which are the non-defense sectors in terms of innovation and their capability, which will inspire you regularly in terms of upgrading or maybe looking at some kind of learnings, unlearnings for you? It's uh, communication. Very important uh, for the civilians, and which actually has been coming up with continuous technology upgrades. And what second, the space sector and the aerospace sector, rather, is another area where a lot of technological development is going on, and which are actually playing a major role in the civilian sector. And of course, uh, robotics is a very important area which actually IQs take autonomous vehicles including drones everything going to play a major role. In fact, the drone based applications are going to be enormous, even including in agriculture area. So these are all the ones the developments which are coming uh, are the inspirations to develop many innovations in different did you get any requests from state police departments for acquiring some kind of assistance from you, some knowledge, some maybe equipment, products for using in their own state, though it is not your mandate, generally. Was there any such? A lot of work uh, DRD would does for the CAPF, Central Armed Forces, uh, Forces. And we do continuously work with uh, CRPF, CA, CASL, Water Security and State Police. A lot of products which have been developed by DRDO um, as a spin-off technologies have been given to these CAPFs and State Police in a big way. And uh, there is a directorate in DRDO headquarters called Directorate of Low Intensity Conflict. It actually works for promoting the technologies for which are required by the CAPFs and uh, State Police. So there are lots of uh, such technologies which actually we give it to state police and CAP. So Dr. G. Satish Radhigaru, thank you very much for your quality time and answering to all these questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for a wonderful session. Stay tuned.